Better put him in a stable, Ben. Looks like a storm coming up. Ah. Oh. What's the good word from Atlanta? <clears throat> the market for cotton doesn't look so good. We've been planting too much, Uncle Albert. Cotton's king. The whole South's built on it. And the world's knocking down our doors for more. Now, when I was a boy... Kathy inside? I... Your lovely wife's in the great barber. Now, Brax, when I was a boy, I remember the whole... Oh, Ned? Yes, sir. Ned, did I ever tell you about the time I cornered the cotton market in Atlanta? Yes, sir, you did, Mr. Albert, lots of times. I did, eh? Well, I... I didn't expect you back until tomorrow. There was a storm coming up. I didn't want to get caught in it. It's been hot like this all week. I don't think it'll storm. Kathy, Atlanta's a powder keg. They're calling up the militia. Ever since I was a child, I've been hearing that sort of talk. It'll blow over. And they're calling all West Point men to active duty. Well, I saved your uniform. I'll go to Atlanta with you and watch you march in the parade. I don't think you understand, Kathy. This is more than just a parade. I've been given a colonel's commission. A West Point graduate, no near colonel. I insist you refuse their offer until they make you a general. You didn't forget the yarn for the new cross, did you? Yes, I did. But I brought you a scarf. Oh, Brax, it's lovely. I ran into a couple of old friends. Really? Who? Will Denning and... Uh... Oh, that Yankee boy from Boston. He hasn't been here since our wedding. I hope you invite him to spend some time with us. I did. They're riding up for dinner tonight. They? Who's your other friend? I've been trying to tell you. It's Clay. I knew he'd come back someday. What does he want? See you, I suppose. You shouldn't have invited him here. Will and Clay and I were roommates at West Point. I couldn't refuse. I won't see him. But we can't be that cruel, Kathy. After all, he once loved you. And you've never completely forgotten him. The past is dead. Why bring it up again? It's dead. You've nothing to fear. It is dead. I know how you and Clay felt about each other. But that was four years ago. He's changed. The Clay you knew is gone, darling. Well, hello, Brack. How are you? Clay? Great pleasure to see you. Our guests are here, Kathy. Hello, Kathy. We're happy to see you, Will. Good to see you, Clay. Hello, Kathy. You're even more beautiful than I remembered. Isn't she, Clay? Well, you fellows certainly look prosperous. What have you been doing to the world? Well, and iron ships out of New Orleans. We take cotton to Liverpool and wool back to Boston. Thank you, Ned. How many ships do you have? Four, three masters. But we're looking for the fifth to take care of the new cargo. Did you hear that, Kathy? That's wonderful, Clay. When you left here four years ago, you had nothing but your father's debts. The world is a rich prize, but you've got to go out and grab your share. It just doesn't come to you sitting at home. What brings you to Atlanta, Clay? Some unfinished business. Do you intend to stay long in these parts? As long as I live. 
I paid my father's debts and brought back his land. So we'll be neighbors again. I know this is a little late, but I don't think I've congratulated you on your wedding. I've often thought of both of you. I brought Kathy a present. May I? Of course. These pearls are from the pirates market in New Orleans Bayou. They once belonged to a Balinese princess. Killer, it's a... Uh... Thank you, Ned. Kathy, did I ever tell you about the time these two fought a duel? We were plebes up at Poughkeepsie on a three-day leave. Will and Clay were courting the barmaid, and she was quite a devil. Our last night there, she decided to date both of them. Well, they decided on a duel. Winner take all. I was to be their second. I've often wondered what would have happened if I hadn't loaded those pistols with blanks. <laughs> <laughs> I aimed at a tree and Clay shot at a cloud. <laughs> Say, maybe you two can give me some advice. I'm experimenting on a new type of cottonseed for export. Will's the expert on cottonseed. Cottonseed? Well, I don't know very much about cottonseed. Come on, Will. I've got some samples in my study. Well, Brad, Will doesn't want to talk about business now. It'll only take a minute, darling. Come on, Will. That's where the real profit lies, Will, on the export trade. Now, you take this new fiber on experiment. Are you happy, Kathy? Why shouldn't I be? Come to Atlanta on business. I came to see you. I'm Brax's wife. Nothing can change that. How can you stand here and not remember? It took you four years to remember. You've prospered. You couldn't have if I'd been with you. I might have gotten all those things and more if you had gone with me. You've four ships. You can afford to buy priceless proofs for no memory. What more do you want? I carried cotton to Liverpool and wool to Boston. On my back as a common seaman. We'll pick me up in a Boston tavern. We don't have any ships. Our business in New Orleans was just waiting for another boat. I didn't care where. I never paid my father's debts. And buying back the old plantation was just another lie. Only these are true. They once did belong to a Balinese princess. But I didn't get them from a pirate's market. They belong to my mother. I always wanted you to have them. What have I done to you, Clay? What have we done to each other? and stay in Georgia any longer. I'll ride with you to the station. And do me a favor. Don't get yourself killed in this war. I'll try not to. You do the same. There's still a lot of ships we haven't sailed. Goodbye, Brax. Bye, Kathy. Take care of yourself. Clay, you'll stay here until our regiments are called up. No thanks, Brax. Bye, Kathy. I'll report directly to Richmond.
Clavin's a fine officer, but... Uh, Speak up. What have you against him? Well, I, uh, I would recommend someone with less, uh, less courage. That's a strange recommendation. Do you want me to select a coward for the job? Craven is reckless beyond all risk. He exposes himself to enemy fire on every occasion. How he's come through three years of this war and still be alive. The man seems to be seeking death. A good soldier dies only once. And death is someone he knows. Major Claiborne is here, sir. Send him in. Yes, sir. You know, Lieutenant Colonel, this is Gerald and Allison. Take a look at this map, Major. Sure. I have a job for you. A difficult job. Maybe it's impossible. Sherman's whole army poured out of Chattanooga three weeks ago. They're moving straight along this single railroad and heading for Atlanta. If he takes Atlanta, we're doomed. Our only chance is to draw him deep into Georgia, cut off his supply lines, and destroy his armies bit by bit. The bulk of his supplies are pouring through this same railroad. And as fast as we destroy it, his men rebuild it. What we've got to do is find a weak link in this railroad so that we can keep destroying it faster than Sherman's men can repair it. And this is the spot. I understand you're familiar with this region, Major. Yes, sir. I used to live near there. Good. Now, take a look at this. You'll see the Devil's Mountain completely dominates the railroad where it passes through Snake Gap. That's the one weak link in Sherman's supply line. I want you to take 20 picked men and four cannons. Put them on Devil's Mountain. Blast the railroad and continue to blast it until we can counterattack. General, Devil's Mountain is a sheer cliff. I might be able to get 20 men up there, but a Fort Cannon, that's another question. So I believe. But we have a scout who says that there's an inside route through the cave to the top that will take this mantled artillery. General, if I could get cannon on top of Devil's Mountain, I could fight there till doomsday. You may have to, Major. <laughs> the wagons are loaded and waiting for you. You'll have four 12-pound brook guns, the best cannon we've got. Pick your men yourself. Now, here's the route that we've prepared for you. This territory is within Union lines. You'll pick up our scout biggers at Captain Farm. He's waiting there for you. He'll take you through the cave to the top. Is everything clear, Major? Yes, sir. And stay clear of Monrovia. We don't know how fast Sherman's cavalry scouts are moving. Is there anyone at Monrovia now, sir? Our latest reports show that it's abandoned. I would suggest that you ask for volunteers and tell your boys what they're up against. Once you wreck the railway and disclose your position, Sherman's men will do everything in their power to blast you off. I want you to hang on. You may have to stay there. So will a lot of Sherman's men, sir. Goodbye, Major. Goodbye, sir. God bless you, Major. Thank you, sir. Men. You don't have to look so brave. I'm afraid you'll all have a chance at being a hero.
see any sign of life down there. That's Catlett's farm, all right. Beggars wouldn't show itself. He's inside, waiting for us. No, Bertie, we're going back to General Johnston. And I'll let you tell him we saw a dead man and got scared. It was just too discouraging. I guess we're going on, Major. through their lines. Grease the axles, tie down everything that can move. Try not to make a sound. Jump to it. The moon's getting brighter by the minute. All right, boys, hook them up. Devil's Mountain. Even a goat couldn't climb up those walls. We're not going to climb the walls. We're going up on the inside through the cavern. I've been in these limestone caverns in Kentucky. If a fellow don't know his way, he sure can get lost permanently. I told you I was up there once. Well, I hope your memory serves you right, Major. Look down the must be a Union scouting party. What do you see, Major? Monrovia. Monrovia? What's that? Just a big empty house. There's a small scouting party there. I can make out only two fires. It's a good thing we come up the back way. We'd have run smack into them. Off the wagons. We'll pitch camp here. Wait for the cover of night and move into the mountain. Yes, sir. scouting party is. Yes, sir. Jerry, break out a rope and lantern. Dismantle the guns and bring them in here. Jerry, take the horses back to General Johnson's camp. He'll need them. I volunteered for this mission, sir. Well, I'll let him stay, Major. He don't want to miss the picnic. You can send Daniel back with the horses, sir. He's a family man. I got nobody but my friend here. 
If that's the way you want it, Jerry. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Get those horses back to General John. What? Major sir. <laughs> it around the other side. Worse. Just a small squad down the house, Major. Not more than a dozen men. You check, Snake Jeff? Yep. Not more than 30. No artillery, just a heap of railroad equipment. How close are they to repairing the tracks? Well, I couldn't rightly see, sir. Got to get those guns up there tonight. Uh, any luck? Nah, it's too bad our people all cleared out for Atlanta. Nowhere we can get any help. Say, there's an old man still living down the house. I saw him picking up firewood in the backyard. What'd he look like? Couldn't see much in the moonlight, except that he walked with a limb. Mac, you and Purdy keep the boys moving. I'm going down to the house. I'll join you within an hour. And if you don't? You're second in command. Hey, Bert, come and get us. The coffee's ready.
They get them going somewhere, Grandpa? Has a man get a breath of air? You want air? There's the man. <laughs> what are you doing? Keep your voice down, Clay. They're all over the house. Why didn't you go to Atlanta? What are you doing here? I couldn't leave Kathy. Kathy? She's in the next room. Carrying up bed sheets to make bandages. Sherman will be in Atlanta before you have a chance to use them. You've taken the run of the house, Sergeant. Permit me the privacy of my sewing room. You know Sherman gave orders to burn down every house from here to Atlanta. What's stopping you? Your husband. Sooner or later, he's going to get lonesome. He's going to drop in to see you. We're going to be here to greet him. You'll never get your hands on him. Oh, Colonel Braxton's a fox, all right, but even a fox gets lonesome. Oh, we'll get him. All we have to do is sit and wait him out. Was this door closed? When a gentleman leaves the room, he usually closes the door. Yes, ma'am. Kathy. Yes, Uncle Albert? Will you come in here, please? me to wake her up? Gone to bed. I never left the hallway. No one went upstairs. What's the matter, Grandpa? I told you she's gone to bed. See that this is sewed by morning. It isn't going to be easy. 
Men, this is Mr. Summers. Every fourth man take a minute. Just follow the light, you can't get lost. Every man carry on the way he can. It's better to make an extra trip to save your life. Start lighting the lanterns. <laughs> down there. Those flyers are from the rail workers' camp. I remember it's Snake Gap. Yes, you can see it clearly by morning. The railroad track runs straight through. How much longer do you think it'll take them to repair the tracks? At the rate they're going, I'd see at least three or four more days. Major. We still haven't found Jerry. We lost Anderson and a cannon. Corporal Jennings is out of action. That leaves us 16 good men and three cannons. That'll do. It'll have to do. Have the men get some rest. Then we'll organize a searching party for Jerry. Yes, sir. Well, Kathy, without you, this mission would have failed before it started. After you destroy the railroad, where do you go? This is where we stay. But you can't stay. Sherman will send half his army to blast you off. That's why we have to stay. Take the pressure off of General Johnston. But that's suicide. You can help us further. How? I've got to know the exact time those trains are coming through. I'll try and find out. Is there some way you could signal us? My bedroom window faces the summit here. I could signal you by day with a mirror and by night with a candle. I'll post a watch on your window. You'd better go now, Kathy, before you missed at the house. Can you find your way down alone? Sure. Thanks. Goodbye, Kathy. Goodbye, Grace.
see your light. I can see it. I can see your light. I can see it. <laughs> Gap major, right on top of them. About 1,500 yards, Mr. Mate. The only spot we're outranged is from Strawberry Hill, about 200 yards short. No need to worry about Strawberry Hill. Pretty, keep the chains on those guns. We may need to move them about after the action starts. Yes, sir. How close are they to repairing the track? I can't tell. The main section gang's working behind the cut. Recheck that range. Now, uh, we got 100 yards to spare, Major. Them trains will be like sitting ducks. How's the leg this morning, Corporal? Oh, I'll be up in a day or so, sir. Say, those peelings, they make good soup. this morning, Jerry? Just fine, sir. Thanks to Miss Summers. She sure is a fine woman. She sure is. Just keep your eye on that second floor window down there. Oh, Major, uh, Miss Summers told me to tell you something. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She said that I should tell you that you should brush up on your Spanish for California. Thanks, Jerry. What is it, Sergeant? Nothing. I'm off duty this morning. You've been following me about for days. This is my kitchen, and it was my house. Let me alone. I like the look of you. Just wanted to talk to you. Talk to me? What about? Doesn't matter. It's been such a long time since I talked to a woman. I like the color of your hair, the way you walk. I just like the look of you. Everything about you reminds me of my wife. I ain't seen her in over a year since I left Springfield. You can drop the knife, ma'am. I don't mean you no harm. You came here as an enemy, Sergeant. You and I have nothing to talk about. I didn't have a hand in starting this ruckus. I was farming. First thing I knew, I was drafted. When I left home, I figured it would be for three months. That was three years ago. Home? Why don't you go home, all of you? Why do you come here to ravage our land? I'm only a sergeant, ma'am. I just do what I'm told. Now, this must have been a fine farm one. Not too many in these hills. Where did you raise before the war started? Cotton. My grandfather planted the first cotton in Georgia. He used to go as far as you could see through that window. And we had sheep, too. Merino sheep. Thousands of them. You men slaughtered the last pair we had. Well, we'll soon be out of here, and believe me, we're just as anxious to go as you are to get rid of it. You mean you've given up your plan to wait for Colonel Summers? We got him in a pocket. We'll never get out. If you're not waiting for my husband, what's keeping you here? We ain't got enough horses. Some of the men will have to ride the train. The way they're working on that track, a train will be through here for a week. I've got good news for you, ma'am. We'll be out of here this afternoon. And on to Atlanta. In another month, I'll be home with the wife and little ones. How many children have you, Sergeant? Two, both boys, five and seven. You wouldn't have a picture of them. Well, I sure have. I put it away in my haversack. Would you like to see him? Yes, I would. I'll be right back.
want to see my family pictures, huh? In your back. Yeah. It's too risky. Give away our position. Are you sure you saw the signal? Positive, sir. And that's it. Watch for the first sign of smoke approaching Snake Bill. Smack. must have finished laying the tracks last night. The trains will be coming through any time now. How do we stand? Number one gun fully assembled, that's all. Give Freddy a hand. <laughs> and number two guns will concentrate fire on the engine of the first train. Number three gun holds fire for the second train. Steady, men. Men, we've got to hit them when they come through the gap. Max, Purdy, we check your ranges. Too long. We're going to lose. What are we waiting for? The second train. We've got to get both of them. Back to your post. Number one gun ready? Back. On. Fire!
this day's work. We've thrown a big monkey wrench into Sherman's campaign. But they're going to bring up every piece of artillery within 100 miles and throw it right back at us. So eat hearty. Try to get a good night's sleep. It's going to be awfully noisy up here from now on. Guys, call out on the grub hold out. That depends on how many mouths you have to feed. Well, it looks like some of us are going to be getting double rations soon. <laughs> How they doing, Jerry? Lots of activity down there, Major. They're breaking ground for the main camp. Jerry, you still got a chance to get out of here tonight. You'd better go. I don't see any of the other men going. You're a boy in a man's war. Well, Major, maybe we'll be here long enough for me to grow a beard. Come in. We'll have to take your uncle's body, ma'am. Take him where? We'll bury him for you. Tomorrow. Sorry, ma'am. I have orders to do it tonight. Must you take him now? I've got my orders, ma'am. We lost 30 good men, including my captain, in that bombardment. How is Sergeant Harper? He died an hour ago. We'll have to go, ma'am. We have a lot of men to bury tonight. Would you happen to have Sergeant Harper's home address? What do you want it for? I'd like to write a letter. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Devil's Mountain, Major. Devil's Mountain. That's Callum. What kind of guns were you able to bring up? I only got nine pounders. The heavy guns won't arrive until tomorrow. Put whatever you have in action. We've got to get them off that mountain. Still too low. Go for maximum elevation. Try double shotting them. Yes, sir. They're too light for this job. There's four more supply trains on their way up. They've got to get through. Then they'll have to wait for heavier guns. We can't wait. Every minute is precious. Sherman can't move without those supplies. Well, there can't be too many men up there. But how do we get them off? We'll have to try direct assault. Have the guns keep firing to cover us. We'll make a run for it. I'll take my men up the inside. You men threat killing the wall.
the gear to find our way up there. I've been into every port. There's a path around here somewhere. Hey, that looks familiar. There's the crystal room. Not far now. Come on. Major. Major, did you get those rebels off the mountain? We lost a dozen good men trying. Two weeks track work by a hundred engineers blasted to pieces in a single hour and a month's ammunition for Sherman. I tell you, Major, if those rebels aren't blasted off that mountain in a hurry, someone's head is going to roll for this and it's not going to be mine. Colonel, when we first passed through this territory, I begged General McPherson to occupy Devil's Mountain. I said we were vulnerable in a dozen dispatches. Nobody listened. You want my head, you can have it, but it won't dislodge those reps. I'm not blaming you, but we can't delay. I've been to see Sherman. He's raising the roof. If he'll send me artillery instead of pea shooters, I'll do the job. Sherman is sending you every large artillery piece he can spare. Meanwhile, we put our thumb. Our command isn't sleeping, Major. You've got one big gun coming fast. One gun? I need a broadside. This Navy gun will do the trick. It's a big 15-inch dog run. It can blow off mountaintops. How are we going to mount a naval gun in these hills? It's already mounted on a flat car. It's coming by rail. It'll be here in the morning. But the naval gun will make short work of those revs. I promise you that. I'll hold you to it. Oh, well, Major, the lady of the house, Mrs. Summers, see that she gets a safe conduct past Chattanooga. Over Major Denning. It's been a long time since you've shared our hospitality. I guess this is the Yankee way of returning. No, look, Captain. I didn't start this war. I see only too clearly why you volunteered for this mission. You've been here before and you knew the territory. How many medals did Sherman promise you for taking Devil's Mountain? Thirty of my men were killed in yesterday's bombardment. None of them got any medals. I didn't come here to fight with you, Kathy. Have you heard anything of Clay? I know he's alive. Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. Clay and I almost missed this war. We were on board shipping to the Far East when Clay suddenly decided to get off. That's when we came here. He told me a story about having to see a lawyer in Atlanta about his father's plantation. It turned out all he wanted was to you again. I... I thought you'd like to know. Thanks for telling me, Bill. I sure would like to see Clay again. I wonder where he's fighting. What am I going to do about you? The best thing you can do for me is let me stay here in Monrovia. Oh, you heard Colonel House. I can't be responsible for your safety here. You better go to Chattanooga. Let me stay, Will. Please let me stay. Oh, you're waiting for Brax, of course. I have news for you. He's free. He and his men cut their way out of the pocket we had them boxed in. Thank goodness. Thank the men up on Devil's Mountain. Because of them, we had to pull every available man and gun over here. Brax can't come here now. You may as well wait for him in Chattanooga. Set an order. I'm just asking you. For your own sake. Please let me stay, Will. I could never refuse you anything. Thanks, Will. Well, Kathy. 
I'll have to place you under house arrest. You, you won't be able to leave the ground. According to the book, you're still the enemy. This operation ought to blast them off the mountain in a half a day. Here's where the enemy stands. From the size of their shot, we know the only guns they've got are 12-pound brooks. These guns got a limited range. They can't shoot much beyond Snake Gap. Now here's Snake Gap. This is where they blew up our supply trains yesterday. This is a danger area. But their range is confined within this circle. Now, the naval gun is coming down from Chattanooga. We'll stop it right about here at this point. That's a good... That's a good 200 yards beyond anything they can reach from the summit. We'll bombard from this point. Oh, we got them sealed off at the mouth of the cave. There's no way down the side of Devil's Mountain. We're going to keep pounding until there isn't a rifle shot left on that summit. Captain Travis, 4th Cavalry. The naval gun is past Cresida. It should arrive at 2 a.m. Great. That's good speed, Captain. Lieutenant, see Captain Travis to his quarters. Yes, sir. Follow me, Captain. It's 1.30. We may as well set our position. Lieutenant Plank of Mississippi Naval Command, sir. You made excellent time, Lieutenant. Will you fix a position for me, sir? Your present position will do. We're a good 200 yards beyond the farthest range of their gun. Will you spot for me, sir? Let me check the ranges first, Lieutenant. I can get a better sight from that rock over there. Bring the transit. Stand by for immediate action. Aye, sir. Right now, there isn't time. Why? I just saw the naval gun they bought up. You haven't got a chance, Clay. That's the engine we heard. How is it mounted? On a flat car. Must be a Dalgren. Yeah. You can all make it if you leave now. With a Dalgren major, they can lay back outside of our range and knock off the top of this mountain a foot at a time. We all knew something like this was bound to happen. As long as we have a single gun here and a man to fire it, they can get a supply train through Snake Gap. That's our job. We're all with you there, Major. Except in that Navy gun has changed the situation. One hour after it opens fire, we won't have a gun or a man left. That's a fact, Major. Clay, don't sacrifice yourself and your men for nothing. You've done what you could, now go. Where'd you see the gun? The other side of that rocky hill. 
Mark. A good 200 yards outside of our range. Even at extreme elevation. You remember the engagement at Lookout Mountain? We were outranged there, too, but we knocked out the guns. Well, they could load with a double charge. The guns won't take it. The barrels would blow up right in our faces. Reinforce the barrels. All we got is rope. It takes wire. And awful strong wire, which we got none of. Any fence wire down at Monrovia? The fence wire was stripped a year ago. We've got to knock out that gun. You still have the piano at the house? Yes, piano wire. That's the strongest there is. It might do the trick. You wait here. I'll be back as soon as I get the wire. I'm going back with you. You're going back into the house? I'll never see you again. You'll see me, Kathy. I'm not ready to die, not yet. Goodbye. Ready to take it back, huh? Sherman's headquarters, sir. 
gun Sherman was sending will never get here. They were ambushed at Peachtree River by Summers Raiders. But a mortar got through. It'll take a month to get mortars down from Chattanooga. It might be quicker to bring another naval gun down from Charleston. We could mount the guns we have on Strawberry Hill, blast them out rock by rock. Strawberry Hill is right in their line of fire. They could pick us off like flies. Plenty of powder, but no guns big enough to do the job. Just how much powder do we have? There's a whole carload that we shipped up with the naval gun. That hasn't been touched. We're going to take that carload of powder. We're going to mine every cavern and passage under that summit. The whole top of that mountain is a hollow shell. We'll blow the lid off. By dawn tomorrow, there won't be a single rebel left on Devil's Mountain. That'll do it, Major. I'll get on it right away, Major. All right, I'll settle it once and for all, sir. I think that's it. We're going to make them pay for every man we've lost, for every minute we've lost. That's the only way. in there yesterday, I remember distinctly. There's been no one in the house, sir, except myself and... the naval gun. You've been working with them all along, haven't you? What if I have? Please let me stay, Will. I should have shipped you off to the prison stockade in Chattanooga the moment I arrived. Maybe yes. I have lied to you, Will. Maybe I have betrayed your friendship. You forgot. We're on different sides. I won't forget again. By dawn tomorrow, there won't be a single man left alive on top of that mountain. Let this woman out of your sight. Ship her off to Chattanooga tomorrow. As a civilian? No. As a prisoner of war. How long will it take to mine the passages? We'll be ready by dawn, sir. Good. There's one hatchet with one, Major. What's that? Well, the way this mountain slopes, there's a chance when the top is fallen off. It'll slide right down into Snake Gap. That'll block the gap for good. How long will it take to build a new track around the gap? Good part of a week, sir. How long will it take to bring down guns from Chattanooga? About a month. Then we've got no choice. We've bought. How much water are we going to need? Every bit we have. All right, get your men busy, Captain. <laughs> Asking that for an hour, ma'am. I can't tell you. But it'll be dawn soon. And I'm not going anywhere. 
Well, you'll soon see what the Major meant, so I guess there's no harm in telling you. They're mining the caves. Gonna blow those men straight off the face of the earth. Sit down, ma'am. You're not going anywhere. Take me to Major Denning immediately. I got my orders, ma'am. But I know those men. I can get them to surrender. You won't have to kill them. I shouldn't have told you. Corporal, please. Take me to Major Denning. I don't like to see any useless killing, but I got my orders, ma'am. Let Major Denny decide that. Take me to him. Please. Set up there to erupt a volcano. Five o'clock. How soon will all the fuse lines be down? Not more than 30 minutes. And another 30 minutes to check it. We're right on schedule. Well, Corporal, what's the meaning of this? I told you to keep her at the house. You can't murder those men in cold blood, Will. What do you think they've done to our men? Take her back to the house and keep her there. Well, Clay, Clay. Clay? You've got to give them a chance to surrender. It's too late for surrender. If you were up there, Clay wouldn't say that. Besides, all you want to do is get them off. What will you gain by, by killing them? If they would surrender, Major. We could get Sherman supplies only through State Gap by tomorrow. How do you know they're going to surrender? At least give me a chance to put it to them. It's certainly worth a try, Major. Hey, don't then to let me through. Don't interrupt the work. Keep lining up the fuse. We set off that charge as per schedule, 6 o'clock. You've got less than an hour. That's plenty of time. Kathy, I want you to get a clear message for me. Tell them that... Tell them there's still a lot of ships we haven't sailed. I've been studying Snake Gap, Major. If they blow us off of here, this whole mountaintop is going to slide right down into the gap. They'll never get a train through there anymore. Well, once we're out of the way, they build a new track around. Not in less than a week, they won't. See, we've got eight dead, three wounded. That's seven of us left. The wounded ain't hurt bad. There's still ten of us. It all boils down to ten lives for a week's delay. How does it strike you, Mike? Just think. Ten men holding up Sherman's whole army for a week. Sounds like a right fair bargain to me. I don't hear a thing. They've stopped digging. They must be laying the fuse line. Let's go and tell them, Major. Someone's coming. Sounds dead ahead. Well, there's one Yankee that's going to keep us company. Lines are all set, Major. All the men accounted for? All of them. We'll wait till six. That was the time. We'd better set it off in the woods. Wish Corporal Jennings was here now. He sure could play that guitar. Gee, I wish I had an ear for music. Mind if I play my mouth organ, Major? Well, go ahead, Burns. Sure wish Corporal Jennings was here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Denny, 
He says you can surrender. What do you have to fix her, Craig? Craig, go. He's your man. Hurry. You haven't much time. It's nearly six now, Major. Take the men down, Mac. What about you? I'll follow. You'll never make it carrying her. Sergeant McCart will take the men down. Major. Give him five minutes more. Fifteen, Major. It's six fifteen. 